Puff and that. What's that? You know, I know Puff and that. Let's just get straight into it, man. Um, it's been a tough weekend, man. It's been a tough weekend for the hip hop community. Um, I think as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, um, the great, the influential, the inspiring, the motivational, um, rapper, entrepreneur, philanthropist, um, call him whatever you want to call him, a <laughs> real estate mogul, um. Just a real icon, um, a real pioneer, um, uh, a living legend, a young legend. You know, people say a lot of, you know, the young legend thing, like a real young OG um, in the shape of Nipsey Hussle, unfortunately was murdered um, on, I think it was Sunday, right? I think it was Sunday, but I saw the news on April 1st on a Monday morning, which isn't the best time to see it, right? Because it's um, April Fool's. And um, I found out about it because, you know, usually um, I don't usually check my phone in the morning. I try to kind of wake up and have like 30 minutes just like, you know, being phoneless and kind of just kind of, you know, recalibrating myself and getting myself centered. And then by the time I get ready, I'm going out for a run, whatever it may be. But on this rare occasion, for some reason, I picked up my phone and went straight to BBC News. Um, and I saw Nipsey's face, right? But it was it was cut out. It was cut right through the middle. I didn't see the bottom of the, I didn't see the bottom where the headline was. And straight away, I knew it was something bad. Um, I think for the BBC, you know, it's a website. It's a new site I we use a lot here in the UK. And um, for Nipsey to be on there, I knew it wouldn't be anything good because for the most part, they only concentrate on like the, you know, the commercial big hit rappers like Jay-Z, Drake, Kendrick, J. Cole, da 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 So if they, have the, if they have those said artists on their website, it might be something to do with a tour. It might be something to do with a really thought-provoking interview they did. But, it was. It's unlikely that J. Cole would make that, especially when the picture was of him at the Grammys. If it was something to do with the working in the community, you would see that picture, right? You'd see him surrounded by folk, whatever, but it was just a picture of him at the Grammys. And I was like, fuck. I scrolled down and it's like, yeah, Nipsey Hussle has been murdered. And it was like, it didn't make sense, man. It just didn't make sense. It just didn't make sense. Like, there's rappers probably in this industry or in this scene now, if you heard they got shot and killed it wouldn't surprise you that isn't to say you don't care about their life but you know the image they portray how they carry themselves it wouldn't surprise you that you know the life they lead that someone wants them dead right but Nipsey Hussle was such a good dude he was doing so much good work in the community he'd come from that world but obviously he kind of made amends to kind of you know uh, correct himself and not be that person anymore right and then bring this camera forward um He'd kind of done all the work needed in order to kind of, you know, um, re-atone for any kind of karma, any kind of negative karma that might have come his way in terms of the, the stuff that he was doing in the, in, um, in his hood that might have been bad from the community and stuff. He'd done, he'd kind of made amends. Um, he did the unthinkable and got his masters back. Um, he was able to put out an album for free and then still have people buy it for $100 or a mixtape that garnered a lot of kind of attention in terms of how ingenious that marketing idea was and the idea that you were supporting him and his vision he was able to take those funds and direct and put them right back into his community right buying back his block that he was hanging out with his friends when they were younger he was in the process of setting up a co-working space setting up process of setting up a school for young kids to learn stem stem subjects in order to kind of make them um comp uh in order to make them able to compete with applicants at Silicon Valley. And he was just generally a good dude, right? He got together with Lauren London, who already had a kid with somebody else, and they fell in love after she had, you know, many failed relationships. And she probably was, you know, thinking there's probably no good guys left out there, right? And then she finally finds Nipsey, who's like, you know, the man of her dreams. And yeah, man, it just it just really got it just really caught me off guard, man. It really, really caught me off guard. Like Especially since um, the last couple of weeks, I've been on a bit of a Nipsey binge. I've been watching. I've watched loads of his old interviews. This is prior to him passing away. Um, I just watched loads of his interviews, and the last interview I watched was the interview where Nipsey and Lauren London had a little sit down with GQ uh, as part of the cover story that they did. The amazing editorial. I'm sure that you've seen it. The picture of Nipsey um, uh, with Lauren London on a white horse and Nipsey holding it, and then walking through um, the streets of LA. And watching that video, you could just see how in love Lauren was with Nipsey, man. Like, she adored that guy. Like, adored him. Like, you don't see that too often. And they're, they're a young couple, right? And you can see that he adored her too. 
and it kind of went through a little bit of a breakup. They got back together again. They had a kid, and it was just they, they were just um, yeah, it was just. I think immediately when I heard the news of Nipsey Hussle passing or being murdered, that's what happened to me. Like I got sad, not because of I got sad because of Nipsey because I'm a big fan, right? I've I, I Victory Lap last year was one of the, my favorite albums. I was a little bit annoyed that he released it so early in the year. I think it came out in January or something. So it kind of had got forgotten by the middle of the year because so much music had come out. I kind of hoped he kind of released it earlier, but I'm assuming, you know, there was a, there was a reason why he put it out in January. He wanted to have like legs to kind of last all the way through December. But for me, it was like one of my favorite albums of the year. I um, had some amazing visuals, um, videos that people are playing now. And um, just in general, his sound was you know, something that you can't really... You know, some as his sound was something that couldn't be copied too easily. Couldn't be into, uh, um, uh, yeah, just couldn't be copied. And um, yeah, immediately when I found out that he passed, my first thought, my first thought or first feeling was just to the people that surrounded him. That's what really broke my heart. Like, because he was so selfless, right? He gave so much of himself to everyone around him. He tried to lift up everyone around him. He tried to, you know. Try to use the influence, the celebrity, the fame, the money, the attention that he had in order to kind of highlight other people around him in his community. Give other people opportunities. And that's immediately the first thing that I thought of. I was like, fuck. What what now? You know? And there's a lot to it. There's a lot to the story um, that I'm sure is on social. I'm sure most of you guys have seen it. Um now the news has come out that the dude that supposedly murdered Nipsey Hussle has been arrested. Um, there's news now that supposedly some of his family members have been have been killed as well because of this as a retaliation, which again is incredibly tragic because they had nothing to do with the situation. And it's just again, it's just that's what broke my heart. That's what I think made me cry. And then, like an idiot, um, I decided to watch a video of Nipsey Hussle being taken away on a stretcher in the hospital. I mean, to the hospital, right? Um, which way he's, he was pronounced dead. And, and I just cried, man. I just cried my eyes out, man. Like, it just didn't make any sense. Like, it just doesn't make any sense now. It really doesn't make any sense. Just can't wrap my head around why someone would want to take out somebody who was trying to do so much good. And it wasn't like he was somebody that had one foot in and one foot out, right? He was trying to do everything he could in his power to show that you know there was another option he wasn't he, he and he wasn't one of those people that was out there disparaging gang culture right because you know there are there are there are very far entrenched reasons why gang culture still persists right now right reasons that are way 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 above anyone's pay grade um but he was just trying to offer those kids another option you can gang bang if you want, but this is another option to get out of the hood because in those kind of areas, they feel as if they have no other option, especially once you get chucked out of school. So um, he tried to provide them with that option and, you know, it's just like, why would someone want to do that? It just doesn't make any sense. And it's just a fatality. It's just the kind of the, the brutality, the evilness of it, just to take him out completely, Right? The story goes that supposedly this guy was trying to get a picture or trying to hang out around the shop. And supposedly he snitched back in the day. So they didn't want to hang him hanging around the shop anymore because, you know, if you snitch, don't hang around us anymore. Which is a perfectly okay frame of mind to operate under, right? You snitch to get out of prison. You live in this gang life and you decided to snitch and on your friends and tell and you know, put them away for longer because you you are scared of staying in prison for too long. Cool, no worries. Not everyone's built for that life. They allow you to come back to your hood. You don't, you don't actually get run out of the hood. You, you're allowed to stay, right? But you just can't hang around us. That's all they say. Just don't hang around us. You can stay. People might call your names in shops. You might get, fr people might throw eggs at you. But for the most part, you can live in amongst your community. You can live. You can live in amongst it. But just can't hang around us. I don't think that's a bad thing. But supposedly he felt embarrassed. He felt like his manhood got taken away from him. Instead of offering to fight, right? Yeah, uh, whatever. Instead of having an argument, he decides to get a gun and completely take Nipsey off the planet. And it's like, why? Like, was that worth it? Was that worth it? It honestly wasn't. But again, it's just, you're talking about a different kind of person. A person that doesn't have the kind of regard for life that I guess that me and you do. 
And um, I don't know, man. For me, it just made me lose hope. I think for the most part, if I'm really honest, it just made me lose hope. Because I look at the situation with Nipsey Hussle, I think to myself, if you're trying to do good, right? If you're trying to do good, if you're trying to really help your community and you're trying to get people out, you're trying to provide them another option, you're trying to show them what it, um, another way, you're trying to, you know, especially people that are, are, have, have not been shown another way all their life, this is the thanks you get. You get killed. And I just don't know whether or not it's worth it. I just don't think it's worth it. Like, what's the point? And now it explains a lot why people don't do this, right? It explains because, you know, there is a thinking in the hip-hop community that people should be going back to their, commu- their community that they come from and trying to give back, right? There is this idea that some people look at some other people begrudgingly. They look at them. They look down upon them. They look down upon some people who go, who kind of, you know, get the riches and fame of the of whatever artistry they're doing and they kind of move away to Calabasas, move away to kind of some nice estate somewhere behind big um, gates uh, with security guards in front and they think ah oh, you know you've changed you moved up on us you, you sold out or whatever it may be and now there is kind of an idea in my head of like yeah i get it man you probably can't help the same way from a distance you probably won't have the same desire to help from a distance your community probably won't, won't, won't want your help that much from a distance but at least you get to stay alive at least your family still has you. Your friends still have you. Your supporters still can listen to your music. But I guess the other side of me thinks there wouldn't be this outpouring of love and support. There wouldn't be this sense of loss like that I feel, not knowing this guy one minute. I've never met him in my life. I've just seen him only on the internet. There wouldn't be this sense of loss if he didn't do the work he did. The work that he did is what makes us feel like, oh my God. Who would do this to this guy? That's what makes us feel that way because we know how much he, we know how important he was to us from the from the outside looking in. Imagine how much import, imagine how important he was to the people living in amongst his community. But I don't know, man. It's just the damage that this is gonna do is just um it hasn't been we, we can't even predict it. We can't even understand how much damage it's gonna do. From the way it's gonna demotivate people to go and give back to their com- local community they've grown up in from the retaliation from the back and forth between gangs about you know in order to kind of make sure they make amends for his death which isn't going to bring him back from the amount of broken souls family and friends who have kind of you know had him as their anchor as the glue that holds their family together from his wife and children from the people that work in his stores what happens to them from the people that were, were going to do business with him what happens to those deals like there's so many things that are gonna just like fall by the wayside because somebody decided to end an argument this way and it's just like wow wow i don't know man i don't know i'm just i'm just shocked man. i'm shocked and appalled and I just think there needs to be a change. I just don't know if there will be because I just don't know if that kind of mentality of person will ever change. That kind of person who gets annoyed that somebody's doing good, right? That kind of person that gets pissed off, that gets angry when they see somebody succeeding or going for their dreams. That person that's cynical, that's full of bitterness. It's just that murderer who killed Nipsey is just one step above that. That's that kind of same thinking that comes from there, right? The idea that you get angry with somebody who has who's more has more success than you, right? Looking at it through the murderer's eyes, like seeing Nipsey surrounded by people that he loves, that, that love him, seeing the glow that engulfs around Nipsey, seeing the way people talk to him with reverence, right? Because I've heard online that Nipsey was a big deal in his area. Like he walks around like royalty, like like he, he, he had a presence about him, right? Um seeing that and you being that way inclined it would rub you up the wrong way right it would really annoy or really wrangle you to the point where you just want to be you'd be violent to the extent where you just have a red missile would descend upon your eyes and i just don't know whether that person can ever change i don't know i don't know if there's any amount of education we could give them that would make them not do that i just don't think it's possible i just don't think i just think some people are wired a different way and i guess on if i'm being optimistic i'd say to the kid up out there who looks at this and is like 
uh, demoralized about wanting to give back to the community, I'd say don't because you know the world needs you. Uh, however short Nipsey's life must might have been on Earth, I think his influence will live on long before we're gone. Right? Um, I would say don't be dis- discouraged. But there is also a part of me that's maybe thinking there has to be a way of doing this without putting yourself at harm's way, all right? Without, because you just can't control what other people are going to do. You know what you're going to do. You know how you carry yourself, right? He he made, it, he made it a point not to carry a weapon because, you know, he had numerous felonies and he didn't want to um, get himself in trouble again with the police and get locked up and be away from his children. So he employed a security guard who sadly took the day off that day because Nipsey gave him the day off supposedly I read online that the security guard that was meant to be with Nipsey or the bodyguard that was everywhere with him was going through his own personal issues and Nipsey told him to take some time off on a Sunday to hang out with his family and then they'll see him again on Monday and the day off the, the, the day he decides to take his day off and then look what happens and now you know the bodyguard wrote a long really heartfelt um, Instagram post the other day talking about how he's heartbroken and he blames himself. He said that he'd swap, his, he'd swap positions with Nipsey in a heartbeat. He'd take his own life if, if to have Nipsey back here again. And that he's going to retire from bodyguarding um, forever. And it's like, now this guy's blaming himself for the death. And it's just, it's just heartbreaking, man. It's just heartbreaking, you know? I really don't know what to say, man. I really, really don't know what to say. Really heartbreaking. And again, I'm a big fan. I'm a huge fan. Just it's so um such a bad it's such a sad coincidence because I was honestly I was on a two week binge of watching every single Nipsey Hussle interview there was because I was so in, I was just like it just inspired me watching his interviews talking about how he got his masters back and the way he's trying to give back to the community or the projects he's doing. It just really inspired me. So then to to have that two week period um uh, bookended by this is just it's just yeah it's just I don't know not to say man. I really, really don't know what to say. I guess thoughts and thoughts and feelings go out to everyone that surrounds him, um, family and friends of Nipsey. Um, I don't know, man. I really don't know how um, how they're going to recover from this or what the process is to recover. I'm assuming the community will gather around and help to prop them up, but this probably isn't the time to speak about those kind of things now. I just want to remember Nipsey and say, R.I.P. to the great, man. Um... Nipsey, uh, hustle in the house. Um, big inspiration to me. Really gave me, um, really motivated me to kind of to to really go for my dreams. Um, really motivated me to have ownership on the things that I do. Really motivated me to be a a good family member, to be a good partner, to be a good brother, to be a good son. Um, and just to be a good guy, right? Because he just came across like a good guy. Um, yeah man R.I.P. Nipsey Hussle you'll be sorely sorely missed man Um, yeah uh, moving on from that there's no real good segue to go from there really but um, you really hope things need to change innit things really need to change 